When building projects with a particle photon, you will eventually need to use hardware more advanced than tactile switches or LEDs. In this tutorial, we will learn how to use the wire library to interface with I2C devices, which allow you to interface with many different modules including sensors and serial memory chips. For this project, you will need the following. A particle photon board, I2C serial EEPROM such as 24C64, two 1K resistors, wires, a breadboard, and a micro USB B cable. In the past, most integrated circuits used parallel data buses for communication, and these buses would include data lines, address lines, and control signals. This use of parallel data and multiple control lines would result in buses having more than 16 wires, which is not convenient for compact designs. While serial ports did exist, they were of connecting one device to another and could not handle more than two devices on the same connection. As electronics became more advanced and with more peripherals being developed, the need for simpler bus solutions became apparent. This resulted in the development of I2C, SPI, and CAN. I2C is a two-wire bus whereby one wire carries the clock signal and the other carries data bits. I2C buses operate around a master-slave topology whereby a single master controller, such as a microcontroller or CPU, controls the clock wire and initiates communication with specific peripherals on the bus, and then slave devices, such as memory chips and accelerometers, respond with their data. The I2C protocol requires that different types of peripherals have different addresses because two devices connect to the same pair of wires. There are no select lines or enable lines, and devices are chosen by the master sending a special address byte down the data wire. I2C can be daunting and confusing when trying to bit bang the bus, but luckily, most microcontroller platforms have both built-in I2C controllers and I2C libraries. To keep things simple, we will look at how to get the particle photon to access an I2C serial memory chip. Depending on how the A0 to A2 pins are configured, we will change the control byte that master sends down the bus when choosing a memory chip. In our example, we will stick with using the simplest address of 000, which is done by connecting all address pins to ground, or 0 volts. Explaining the I2C protocol in depth is somewhat unnecessary when using built-in peripherals and libraries, but learning the basics can help in cases when I2C devices refuse to work. An I2C transaction involves the master sends control byte down the bus to choose a specific device. The master then sends a command or request for some data. The master then sends data associated with that command or the slave device sends data back. The master closes the session. Each message sent down a bus is typically 11 bits long, which includes an 8-bit data packet, a start bit, a stop bit, and an acknowledge bit. The start bit is the very first bit to be sent. The 8 bits data packet is then sent, the responding device sends back the acknowledge bit, and then a stop bit is sent. However, most I2C messages often involve more than one packet of data, and so the start bit is only sent at the very start of the transaction, and the stop bit is sent at the very end of the transaction. When using the wire library, the bus protocol itself does not need to be understood, but the control bytes and the other data packets that need to be sent do. When using I2C devices, it is critical that you read the datasheet. Random read and write allow us to write the byte of data into a specific memory address, and this is the most likely the type of reading or writing you will do to serial memory devices. Any communication with an I2C device first requires that a special control byte is sent. In the case of an I2C serial memory, this byte is 1010 followed by the address pin configuration, and then a read-write bit. In our case, the address pin were all connected to 0 volts, which means your control byte is either 1010000 for writing to the EEPROM or 1010001 for reading from the EEPROM. This is how a byte of data is written into memory address. Send the control byte, which in this case would be 1010000, send the upper address byte, send the lower address byte, and send the data byte, and then end. And this is how you read data from the memory address. 
send the control byte, which again would be 10100000, send the upper address byte, send the lower address byte, resend the start bit, send the control byte, which would be 10100001, and then read the byte and end. With all the theory and protocols touched on, it's time to see how to use the wire library. The first line that you will need to include on top of your code is a library include code, as shown below. When an I2C transmission is to be started, the function wire begin transmission is called when the control byte is passed as a parameter. When a byte is to be written to an I2C device, the function wire.write is used. Reading data from I2C devices is not as trivial and requires the use of two functions, wire.requestFrom and wire. Dot read. The example shown shows how to read 6 bytes from an I2C device. Once all data has been exchanged, the function wire.endTransmission is called. If a restart bit is needed instead, then false can be passed to this function. 